Welcome back, welcome back. This is the Hello Watch Kit video tutorial series and you are on episode 3. If you missed the first two, make sure you go back and watch them. We learned how to create a watch app and then we learned how to make a segue and also to show a map. In this episode, we'll be looking at how we can present pages. So let's get started. We see here that we're still in our same Hello Watch Kit project that we've gone before and right now we're looking at the storyboard. The first thing we're going to do is we need a new interface controller so that we can create our page. And then what we need to do is create the code for this interface controller. So to do that, I'm going to go on the Watch Kit extension, right click and say new file. Then I'll go to iOS source and select Cocoa Touch class. And I want a WK interface controller, so I have the right thing. If I didn't have it here, I could just search, but we do already. Prepending feature onto the interface controller there and say next. We want to make sure that it's saved in the watch kit extension, which it looks like it is, and click create. Perfect. So now we have something that we can tie that interface we created on our storyboard with code, but we haven't connected them up yet, so we need to do that first off. So make sure that your new interface controller is selected, and then in the identity inspector, select your new feature interface controller from the class dropdown. Now what we can do is we'll add an image and a label on there and then we'll wire that up in our new controller. So when you get on the assistant editor, you might need to scroll your interface over so that you can see. And you can even collapse the sidebar here by pressing this button. So now we have a little bit more room. So what we wanna do is create an outlet for our image and our labels. So when this interface gets loaded up, we'll be able to populate them with data. So I'm gonna hold control on my keyboard and then drag just below the class definition. I can just call this uh, image and then I can do the same thing for my label, call that label go back into our main interface controller, which is what's getting called, and we need to hook up something in here so that we can um, press a button and then it'll direct us over to the new interface controller. So the way to do that is go back on our interface and right now we have the view map button. Now we're gonna make another button for browse features. So now we've got our browse features button. And what we need to do is to connect it. But instead of connecting it like we did with this segue where we control drag over to the interface, we're actually going to do that in code. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to set up an action in the interface controller to get triggered when the button is clicked. So I'm going to hold control and drag over here right below the did deactivate method and instead of an outlet I'm going to make an action and I'll say browse button press. So now when we click on the browse button, this will get triggered. But what do we want to happen when that happens? We want to use a method called present controller with names. And what this will do is it'll pop up a modal for however many names we give it. That's the, the number of pages that it will have. And then the context is the data that gets passed into each page. Create a property called features. And it's going to be an array with strings. So that's easy enough, we can just pass that in here. We want this uh, feature interface controller to be repeated three times. Luckily enough, the array actually has a function that you can call um, to repeat a certain value. So I'll go ahead and type that out here. So what that'll do is create an array of three things because we've got three things in our features array, but each value will always be the feature interface controller. And so that's what we're going to use here for the names that we're going to use in our present controller. Now we need to do one more thing. Right now we have the images, but we haven't imported those into our project yet. So what I'm going to do is go back to the single view and then click on images.xc assets. Luckily enough, I actually have some images right here. And notice that they have the same names as the context that I was going to pass in. When they're in our watch kit app, that means that um, they'll be preloaded onto the watch. And as soon as they're requested, then the watch will load them up. So now what we need to do is go into that new controller we made, the feature interface controller. And this awake with context method is what gets called right whenever the interface loads up. When it gets called, what we want to do is populate the image and the label with what's been passed in as the context. And in this case, we're going to pass those single words in. And so that's easy enough. But now you notice we've got a couple of errors here, so let's see what they are. The first one says we need to supply a UI image, so instead of using set image, we actually need to use instead set image named. 
So that fixes the first error, but now we've got a couple more. It says any object not identical to string. That's because the context can be any object when we pass it in. So we need to make sure it's a string before we're performing set image name and set text. To do that, we'll use a feature of Swift called iflet. And now you see both of our errors are cleared up. So now we can actually test our app. If we press the Browse Features button, then we don't come up with anything. Wonder why that could be. If you notice up here, we actually do have a warning. And if we click on the warning, we see it says Feature Interface Controller is unreachable. That's because we didn't connect it with a segue, and we also didn't provide the code a way to know what we're talking about in our storyboard. To do that, we'll just copy the class name and then go over to the attribute editor and paste it into the identifier field. The identifier is what the code can refer to. So now if we run the app, we actually do get both the label and the images here, and we can browse the different pages. Awesome. So that's it for this episode of Hello Watch Kit. In the next episode, we'll look at how we can load data onto pages and even create a detail view for clicking on a cell in the table.